Hello, I'm Greg with Brownlow Rights. Today we're going to be talking about this little device. For those of you that don't know what this is, this is a handheld, weather-resistant, ballistic computer married together with a sensor pack. Now with this little guy, I can measure temperature, humidity, station pressure, the actual pressure at my firing position, as well as the wind speed using this handy little impeller here. This particular unit, the 5700 Elite, has the ability to store 30 different profiles in here, and those profiles are important because that's where I plug in all of my data about the barrel configuration of the rifle that I'm using, as well as the bullet and the velocity of that bullet in here. Now, some of you maybe have not had the opportunity to use this thing before, but I'll tell you this, this has become my number one trusted device when it comes to making first round impacts at distance with a rifle. Because I need to know what those variables are and then compute a firing solution based on that. And the applied ballistics software in this little device does that all automatically once it's been programmed correctly. Now there is a ton to go over in, in this little unit if you've never used one before. But today we're going to focus on one specific aspect of it that people tend to use incorrectly. So the way that this unit works is when you're taking a wind reading, you'll point the back of it directly into the wind. Okay, so we have a wind that's coming from about this direction here right now. So this will work fine for us so I can demonstrate the differences here. But most people, what they'll do is they'll take a target reading, so this little red button here, I'll select target, and I'll point that at my target. Let's just say it's straight over there, and I'll hit the little red button. That will put the direction of fire into the software. Now I'll go down to wind, I'll pop my little impeller open. Now this is what most people do. They'll ping the target, now they'll take a wind reading, and so wind is coming from about right here, We've got a wind that's about one o'clock in terms of its direction from the target, and it's blowing an average of five miles an hour. So I'll hit the red button again, and that will stop it from taking any more readings. So now I've got a static reading in here. So I've just demonstrated how most people would use it. They would take a ping on the target location, and then they take a ping into the wind. Now the setting we're gonna discuss here is in the wind direction location. So if I go in here to wind and I go wind direction, the wind direction change, there's two options in here, manual or with direction of fire. Now if I choose manual and I do it the way that I just demonstrated, my wind capture is only good for that one direction of fire. If I change direction of fire and start engaging another target, I'll have to take a wind capture again based on that target's location. Because you can think of this as slices of a pie, right? My target is here and over here is off to the right somewhere is where my wind is coming from. And then I shift that whole thing, well now, Despite the fact that it's coming from the same direction in the software, the wind is not doing that in, in the real world here. So in order to fix that, I would have to take another wind capture for every single target engagement. Whereas if I change this wind direction to with the direction of fire, then I can take a wind capture anytime I want. Now, this is straight north here. So I'm gonna do a target capture of basically due north, or as close to it as I can get. So 358 degrees, that's not quite 360, but it's pretty close. Now, if I do a wind capture off of that, it's giving me about a 10 o'clock wind, which that's pretty good. Based on, if that's 12 o'clock, over here, 10 o'clock is about where the wind is coming from, and that's right. Now that I've done that target capture and I'm shooting north, well, what if I shoot over here? Will the wind come with me? So I'll do a target capture here at this new location. As soon as I finish the capture, the wind direction changes. 
instead of being 11 or 10 o'clock like it was before, now it's 2 o'clock because that's a much closer relationship to where it is actually coming from given the new target that I'm engaging here. So by setting your Kestrel up to have the wind direction change with your direction of fire, you will only have to take one wind reading as long as that wind condition stays consistent. Now, if the wind switches in direction or intensity, well, you would need to take another wind capture in order to update that information. And what this allows you to do is engage multiple targets from a single firing position without having to update your wind capture every time you engage a different target. Now in a hunting situation, this can be extremely important because you can sit down and, and if the wind is staying consistent, you can capture the wind and then later when your animal presents itself, all you have to do is capture with the target direction of fire and the wind call will be automatically updated. This can also be extremely useful in a match setting where you have targets at different angles but the wind obviously is not necessarily changing the angle immediately for each target. It would be mostly persistent for your particular string of fire. So if you haven't been setting your Kestrel up this way, then you should probably do this. Now if you're going to be creating a manual ballistics chart or something, you may want to turn this feature back off so that you can control the wind direction manually and keep everything static. Now you might not actually have this option in your Kestrel. If you have a Kestrel and you do not see this in your menu item, well, it's definitely time for you to go and update your firmware using the Link app on your phone. This is a, a relatively new feature, so there's a lot of you that probably do not have this menu option available. How you get to this is you come down into your Wind option, enter into that, go into Wind Direction, enter into that, and Wind Change, and you'd go from Manual to with direction of fire, with DOF. And that will make sure that when you're turning and got a wind capture here, it'll stay static. So if I ping a new target direction and I stop capturing, you see how the wind changes. So from where we were pointing, all I did was capture the target and now we have a new wind direction. Well, that should help you learn how to use this Kestrel just a little bit better and have a much more practical experience with it when you're using it on your next target engagements. Be sure to click that little thumbs up icon if you enjoyed this and if you're not subscribed to our channel currently you might consider doing that right now as well so that you can be updated about our new videos as soon as they get posted.